Yeah. I was like really trying to hold it together a bunch. People are asking me questions about my dad and then like, just like holding the cup and, um, there, there's a lot of emotions that, you know, I didn't even think I, you just don't think that you have. Right. And then all of a sudden you get in the moment, you look out in the crowd, you're holding the cup over your head, doing your lap. And it's like, you know, you dream about that. <laughs> Pass the torch, man. Keeps getting better. Well, TJ Oshi, thanks for joining me, man. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me. Awesome week out here at the ACC Celebrity Golf Tournament. First day, I think you uh, finished pretty well, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm at the tie for tie for the lead right now, which is uh, unreal, uh, crazy to me. I'm I'm lucky if I get this many points in the whole tournament. So really it was a good day. Yeah, that's awesome. Did I hear a rumor that you kind of pulled out some old clubs for this round? Yeah, I brought brought out my uh, my clubs from about six seven years ago, and uh, uh, just these old Mizuno blades, and uh, so I'm rocking those. Driver was good, putter was good today. So, what was the mindset on like the switch? Why did what what made you switch it up? Uh, so I had some newer Mizunos, and I was messing with the loft and like the length of the shafts. And I basically just messed them up, trying to do too much to them. So, uh, while they were in the shop getting ready, I uh, pulled out my old ones. Had a uh, had a decent round, so I just stuck with him. That's hilarious. Um, so golf's been a big part of your life beyond the ice for a while now. When when did that kind of like itch start for golf? Uh, I think just in high school. Uh, really small town in in rural Minnesota. Um, half the hockey team played baseball. Half the team played golf. Mm. Golf got out of school more, so I decided to go out for the golf team. So that was my first day on the course, and uh, fell in love with it right away. Started with some old. Uh, graphite wilson staffs and uh work my way up couldn't put the sticks down ever since no yeah no. that's awesome and so you mentioned war road um i want to dive into your career um because you have a great story in hockey and so basically up up there you can skate before you can walk is that right uh those guys could yeah i i moved in high school gotcha um, so i'm uh kind of an honorary uh child of uh of war road but um yeah those kids are you know they're they're bred yep. most of them to to play hockey and um, I still see my high school buddies see their videos of going out on the lake and playing on outdoor rinks and their kids are younger than mine and it's just like it's crazy yeah you know out in DC it's it's tough to do that but uh, out there they're skating every day that's funny and so when did the NHL kind of become your goal uh, I think right when I was really young I just kind of told people I was gonna play in the NHL um, not really knowing what actually has to go into it to get there um, and I never it was just kind of something that I was going to do once I, you know, went through peewees and then bands right. in high school and then college. Um, but I never, I never watched NHL hockey growing up. Um, when I didn't even know what getting drafted meant when I got drafted by the blues. I saw that story. So like, it was just, you know, I, I'm, I'm a very present guy. I live in the moment and, um, yeah, just kind of went day to day and then, wound up uh making the team my rookie year yeah that's awesome and so i i read the story right where you're watching some M mtv or whatever it was during on draft night i think it was uh yeah I, I didn't go to the draft um it was road rules real world challenge i think and i was just laying on the floor <laughs> with a pillow by my, behind my head and my uh my really really close buddy eric olim from uh from warroad was uh he's more like hockey nerdish like really pays attention watches a lot and so he's just sitting there with like his dial up internet um on his computer watching like the names come he's like oh brian lee who i was gonna room with the next year at north dakota um you know he he's he got drafted at i don't i remember what it was seven maybe or uh top 15 for sure and then i was like oh sweet like you know good for him yeah and he's like oh my god you drafted you drafted and i was like all right dude man like show's on <laughs> and uh and then i had to do a bunch of interviews and stuff and uh you know kind of uh, be pretty vague about which players i wanted to play with because i didn't really know who was on the blues at the time so. that was the second part of the, the story that i read that's hilarious so yeah. it's funny to see like a guy in the nhl just doesn't really not not care but it's like just doesn't watch the game too no often. i mean i was always if i had free time i was playing sports yep. um not just hockey basketball football baseball soccer um golf and uh so there was no time for me to kind of be a fan really because I hate I hate watching things that I feel like in my own mind I can do myself. So yeah. even when I, I I love watching golf, but I'll watch for like an hour and then I'll be like, "Hey, honey, you mind if I go to the range? Like, yeah. I want to go." You know what I mean? So 
um yeah that was the same story for hockey approaching it that way probably helped your development as an athlete like playing all those different sports like thing seeing how different people interact in different teams and all that stuff so that was probably good for your development no it was for sure i mean i played running back in in um in high school and that kind of taught me how to take a hit how to give a hit um you know soccer with the footwork on the ice which a lot of kids a lot of guys don't work on um and i work on it you know every every other practice i have coaches just throw pucks in my in my skates uh you know little things like that hand-eye coordination knocking stuff out of the air from baseball so uh yeah I think it all comes into play yeah and I was just talking to uh, Adam Thielen on we just had him on the podcast and he was talking about how golf kind of helped him in the mental side of the game become a better football player right and so have you seen that with hockey kind of golf like make you more mentally tough because when you gotta you hit a slice you get one of those double bogeys you gotta be able to forget about it and come back on the next hole uh yeah in, in a way i think mostly just getting older i think is uh is kind of what's helped me with the mental side of of hockey but uh golf definitely translates a little bit the the problem with golf is when you hit a, have hit a bad shot or have a bad hole you can't just go out the next shift and hit somebody right which is great because in hockey you can you can have you know you can have the worst hands you've had all year but you can go out and be really physical and make a difference in the game so um that's what's an easier side about about hockey and golf it's uh it obviously doesn't work that way and on the easier side you can also rely on your teammates where in golf you're all yeah, alone exactly yeah exactly 100 percent. it does get lonely out there sometimes yeah um and so you mentioned drafted the blues had a few successful years with them and then you were traded to, to washington right and so you you're starting on a line with alexander ovechkin backstrom some future hall of famers just what are some good lessons that you learned from them early on in your in your career at washington uh what what stuck out to me about Ovi right away is how much he enjoyed the team scoring goals mm -hmm. so like no one wants to score more than he does but I don't think anyone gets more excited when like his teammates score than he does either That's awesome. so it's like it's amazing and you know I think when you're when I was younger there'd be times where maybe we'd win a game like it would be a blow it'd be like seven two and if I didn't have a goal I was like man like what, what the heck like all in, instead of being like so happy for the guy that scored two and the defenseman that got his first goal in 50 you know what i mean right and so i kind of learned that from from Ovi, and then backstrom's mind is like a is like a it's just like made out of steel i don't know he he just doesn't get too high he doesn't get too low um and i'm still trying to i still really look up to that in him because you know even just in a in a period there's so many ups and downs in, in between your shifts and he's just always like even keel and i i love i love playing with him but sometimes like on the bench when i look over and he's just has, has like the same look and probably just focusing on the game or thinking about the last shift i'm like gosh like did i make him mad like i wonder but no he's just like he's just laser focused ready to rock no matter wh whether we scored or we just got scored on he's the same way so that's something i'd uh I'm still trying to uh, emulate a little bit. That's hard to do, man. I wonder how he is on the golf course. Do you know? He's he's <laughs> yeah. He's exactly. right. I think he's right here in everything. Yeah, that seems awesome. like he's just he's uh, I don't know. He keeps his emotions in check really well. Your point with Ovi, that's great to hear because I mean he's a guy who 60 goals a season is like almost the expectation, right? And so for a guy to get so excited about his teammates scoring goals as a fan, that that's really cool to hear. I I'm telling you, there's no one that gets more excited about his their teammates scoring than he does. Yeah. And so you guys had some successful teams, right? And so you won a Stanley Cup. Was hoisting Lord Stanley just the greatest feeling in the world? It was. It was the best. I mean, short of, you know, the wedding day and ha and having the kids. Um, as far as an athlete goes, that's that. It, that was the best day. Um, moment feeling I've I've ever had for sure. Yeah, it was cool because obviously the Avalanche won this past season. Seeing some of those guys who have been on that team for ten to twelve years, you just see the emotion as soon as the cups in their hand just pour from their face. It's really cool to see. It is, and it's 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 weird how it's like uncontrollable. Yeah, I was like really trying to hold it together a bunch. People are asking questions about my dad, and then like just like holding the cup and um, there there's a lot of emotions that you know i didn't even think i you just don't think that you have right. and then all of a sudden you get in the moment you look out in the crowd you're holding the cup over your head doing your lap and it's like you know you dream about that that's like there's just the so old, much that goes into of it. every dream that's like the end goal that like that's what happens and so to do to live it was uh really special that's the peak and so you also had a really cool event you played in the olympics and so i kind of want to touch on the the five goal attempts in a row in the shootout um what was that process like like by the fifth attempt, are you just like, what is my move here? Like, what should I do? 
Uh, no, actually, I was so I was confident on my first shot. Um, my second shot. I'm trying to think if I scored. I think I missed. I don't. I don't even remember. But um, my second shot, I was the most nervous for because I was thinking, if I miss this, then I I might not get another chance to go again. Um, and so uh, I was nervous for that one. And then after that, I was pretty. I was pretty dialed in. I was super comfortable. Um, I had an idea what I was going to do every, every time down the ice. It was actually, now I take the same route in every time, but I had never done that before until, uh, till that game, because I was going to be shooting a bunch and I figured I'll just do the same thing every time. And maybe he'll just start guessing. Yeah. Um, and Bob's obviously like a phenomenal, phenomenal goaltender. So, uh, yeah, I, I started feeling it after I made a couple and, uh, you know, Quickie was phenomenal but for us in goal. Right. He made some huge stops against, like, like world-class, like, players, you know, that, like... And he's still doing it They're, like, the top players, you know, in the game at one point, which I, I've never been there, won't, won't get there. Um, but uh, it was it was just a, a cool moment, and um, we both acknowledged each other, like, after the, the goal went in, and uh, it, it was just, it was an awesome... Yeah, awesome, cool thing. So, super cool game, but how, how about the event itself? Just like being in the Olympics, like all the best athletes in the world in one place. Like, was that just surreal for you? It was. It was pretty crazy seeing. We went up and watched uh, Sean White in the half pipe, um, and like just just seeing these other athletes. Like, just because of the season, we never get to see that stuff. Um, even just having lunch with um, all the different athletes in there. Not only like the Americans, but everyone, the Russians. Swedes, um, Canadian, you know, everyone's in there. Um, everyone's, you know, sharing McDonald's together yeah. because, uh, food wasn't outstanding. Um, I'm not very adventurous when it comes to food. So I had uh, McDonald's almost every day, but it was, uh, it was such a cool experience just to be there and be named an Olympian. That's something coming from world. We've had, uh, some Olympians, some, some big dog Olympians come from there. Um, playing the 1960 and 1980 teams. And so, uh, to kind of carry that tradition on was cool yeah that's awesome and so congrats on an incredible career on the ice and then still going so to talk a little bit about beyond the ice what you got going on so to continue to continue with the theme of war road and so what was your inspiration for founding this new clothing brand i know you have your partner um but it's a super cool company and it's awesome to see a bunch of guys across the league starting to wear it but yeah. what was your inspiration for the company thanks i was uh the idea for the company was 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 brought to me by my uh a couple of my partners and uh they're like, you know, we want to make a hockey brand that's just very, like, hockey. Like, things that hockey guys want to do. We want you to help design it. And uh, and I thought it was really cool. Um, at the time, I had really nothing going on um, away from hockey. So we started it up. started out with just hats and T-shirts, really small, simple. I thought it was, like, super cool to have a company named Warroad. Like, yeah. I owe Warroad, the town of Warroad, and the people there, like, basically my whole career in in my opinion so um to be able to, to create a company to to give a portion of the proceeds back so that no one has to pay for ice there which still blows my mind that's great no one pays for ice like not even like the adults so it's, it's really cool um but uh and then we we slowly kind of transitioned into undergear stuff and that's where we're kind of making some good headway it's i i I basically designed the whole thing um, myself with how it should fit and got some stuff to lock your elbow pads in place, which is, you know, a huge problem for hockey players, some cut proof wrists, cut proof Achilles tendons. Um, so yeah, it's, it's awesome to see that people just like it and see people wearing it. Um, my partners will send me pictures when they see someone in a post game interview that I don't personally know that I haven't sent the stuff to myself wearing our stuff. And I'm like, man, that's, like it's it's be I didn't even feeling. know like that many people were wearing it, so it's been fun, and my partners are great, and and Waro has been really cool about it too. Yeah, I follow you guys on Instagram, and it's, I I see the same thing in the post game interviews, so it's great to see the kind of the growth of it. Um, but so you seem pretty involved in the company. So has there been like any biggest struggles or like some things you've learned about the world of business that you didn't expect? Um, yeah, I think just kind of how slow it 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 can take. Like, there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of work that has to go into it. A lot of work that like I'm not doing, like my partners and and our teams doing. Um, but you just feel like you got the like you have this really good idea, 
in your head it makes like perfect sense everyone's gonna love it but then like you feel like it's just gonna be like you're gonna go here and then you're gonna be like the best in the world yep. and uh it just takes time and i'm so so lucky to have uh such a great team with me um to kind of carry the brand and and do all the day-to-day stuff and really all the hard work i get all i get to do all the fun stuff. fun stuff yeah building a company building a brand is a roller coaster but you got to embrace the journey much like you're probably road to the nhl um and so you mentioned part of the proceeds and so a portion also goes to alzheimer's disease right in memory of your father yep. Yeah, so kind of what did your dad mean to you growing up as a kid and kind of just like your journey as a whole? Oh man, he was he was kind of everything. He he got me into every uh sport you could think of. Um you know, back then we didn't have like the iPads and all that. We had like a Game Boy, but um for the most part if there was any downtime at the house, me and my dad were playing catch. We were playing catch outside. He was playing street hockey with us, playing basketball. Um so my whole life really uh, revolved around sports, and uh, and my dad was basically good at everything, every sport. So um, we spent all of our time kind of doing that, and that was uh, he was my coach from you know the time I first started until um, until high school uh, when we won the state championship my senior year. That was the last time he coached me in anything, um, but he was uh, just such a good guy. Um, we're similar in, in our athletic ability and similar in kind of our competitiveness. Um, but he was kind of the class clown, like the control the room with his jokes and yeah. always wanted a microphone. I'm very like, try to stay off camera yeah. more so. So um, not a great st- storyteller at all, but uh, he was just such a great man. He loved uh, my mom and us and, and uh, my brother and sister very, very much. And uh, just, just a really, really, just cool guy to know i mean he i would get stopped like all over the u.s like just at like a store of someone will come like hey i know your dad and i'm wow. like how <laughs> and like oh yeah we had some drinks he told a bunch of jokes like at some bar in like missouri <laughs> one time when he was coming to see you so it's uh yeah cool really cool guy i miss him a lot that's awesome man yeah so i mean keep killing it with the company it's obviously you are making a cool product but also going to a great cause as well so keep at it. it's awesome to see thank you appreciate that um so we'll jump into some rapid fire here you can go one word one phrase take okay. as long as you want we'll okay. just jump right in right. um who's your favorite athlete growing up as a kid michael jordan favorite athlete to watch in current day sports um i know you don't watch sports <laughs> i don't watch a lot of sports <laughs> yeah uh i like watching justin thomas a lot yeah he's yeah. a stud i yeah. love justin thomas as well um favorite we've talked about a few great ones what's the best moment of your own sports career uh stanley cup by far favorite club in the golf bag uh probably my 60 degree wedge is that the new one of the new old mizunos that you're using no it's actually a demo right now because really? i ordered some new uh new wedges and they didn't come in time but uh it's working gotcha um favorite music artist uh luke combs love luke combs great new album too he, he's i think i mean i have so much respect for like george Strait and like you know the, the old school the, the big dogs but yeah. like i think he's the best i've ever seen crushing it yeah um best place you've ever traveled i hate traveling <laughs> um lake tahoe honestly yeah it's probably lake tahoe it's amazing it's my yeah. first time here dude it's yeah. incredible um last one here what is one word that best describes you competitive it's awesome um so we'll finish up with our last question here i appreciate your time um this is our our, our rowback question of the day use torch 20 for 20 percent off your first order at rowback.com but if you had one piece of advice that you've learned throughout your career whether it's in hockey with building war road that you could pass along to the next generation to help them accomplish their dreams what would that one lesson be uh probably just probably to take care of your teammates um i think it's so important um and it's not just like being their buddy you know it's sticking up for them if you know something goes wrong it's uh set an example by working hard having them work as hard as you um and with it comes you know learning about them knowing their family um and just caring for him. So I think that's the one lesson my dad always taught me was to take care of my teammates. And uh, I think it's I think it's super important. Yeah, that's great to hear. And, and that story you talked about, Ovi, is really going to stick with me, um, the way he treats his teammates. So yeah, I appreciate your time, TJ. Thanks for coming on. And I wish the best of luck to you. Thank you, sir.
Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoyed the content. There's plenty more Pass the Torch episodes along with other podcasts we got going on and video series we do. So subscribe and we'll see you later.